Hey everybody, this is Rob Goth here at the ET Whisper. How are you guys doing out there? I hope everyone is doing really well, and I hope you guys have been enjoying uh, the more continuous uploads that we've had on the channel, as well as having uh, more content in general on the shorts department and also our weekly radio show. Some of you guys don't even know that we have a radio show because you have to go to the live tab to click it, but I've been asking uh, in guest every week uh, for over a year now at this point, uh, going back on off the old uh, Enlightenment Evolution Hour, so if you guys like good conversations about metaphysics and channeling and stuff like that, please feel free to go check out the live tab here. I want to talk to you guys now about this galactic channeling. Uh, this is a very interesting one. I always tell Ardiff to bring in the beings who are different. I tell him to bring in some of the beings that we might be somewhat aware of that want to give us some information or share a topic, but I also ask him to bring in beings uh, that we've never heard of. And in that, I also tell him once in a while, I want you to bring in a being who's on the more uh, type 2 malevolent spectrum because I think that getting uh, perspectives from every race is good. And I know a lot of people worry for me, but I want you guys not to worry. When I'm channeling these beings, their energy might be coming through my body at some level, but Aradif uh, and Treb know how to protect me. They're the ones that are actually channeling these beings through me. Uh, and kind of using that. So I always say, yeah, you know, I'm the ET Whisper. I've channeled over a thousand different ET beings, and that's true, but I've also had that done with the help of Treb and Ardiff and also with their protection. So I don't want you guys to worry about me. I know some of you are like, why would you even bring a, this negative being in? What, what purpose does it serve? Well, I brought in a couple of them before, and they tend to be some of the more interesting perspectives. We had a, a type 2 more negative reptilian female who talked about their society. We had the Theta Tauri um, who came in and shared their perspective. And even though we didn't like what we heard in some of these, I always think it's important to hear things that you do and don't like. And the reason why it's so interesting is we get a whole new perspective. So I want you guys to enjoy. After the channeling's over, I'll share a little bit about my Patreon. And I also want you guys to know, as much as I hate saying this, and as cliche and repetitive as it is, it does actually help our channel a lot when you like the videos, put comments down below, in the videos and if you're subscribed but you don't have all the notifications rang it's a lesser effect and the only reason I bring this up is YouTube did change their algorithm and it's actually in a better way for this channel and it hasn't been that way for some time I've not only been inactive but the algorithms for all the good videos that I had from before weren't getting out there so a lot of people who were on my subscriber list didn't even know I was uploading videos again, and I've been doing it more regularly now for over a year. That's how much the subscription comments and turning on the notifications really helps. I know you guys uh, who are here enjoy the videos, enjoy the channel, so please do that as a favor to our channel to help get exposure. First, to the people who've been subscribed forever who don't know we're back, <laughs> and also to people who might enjoy channeling, uh, but they've never heard of this channel, or they did but didn't know how to find it. It really does help, guys. Thank you so much. We love you guys. Have a great day, and enjoy this uh, Type 2 malevolent reptilian being. Have fun, guys. Love you. Greetings to all the Zardif, that is A-R-I-D-I-F, and this is its spell. We understand that all of you desire to go trade with yet another galactic form of consciousness within your galactic co-creative sphere. But before diving into this co-creation, we first must express the two things in which we have always expressed. First, above and beyond all things that are expressed in this day, to know, to feel, and to perceive that you are loved and our perspective is of the utmost importance. Secondly, it is our greatest excitement and within that same form of great excitement in which we co-create with you, not only you as the individual that we are speaking to in your own perspective, but the you that exist as a collective form of consciousness and in that co-creation, regardless of the parameters of the time in which you co-create with us from your linear perceiving consciousness we co-create with the same vigour. Now, of course, 
Many of you desire to co-create with entities that are either type 1 beings that exist as a co-creational sphere or those that are type 2 and are type 2 highly benevolent beings. Yet there is a great spectrum in the galactic collective consciousness and in Rob's own excitement he desires to hear from those that are type 2 and malevolent to the type 2 to neutral spectrum. Now for greater understanding, we will share with you the difference in that of a type 1 being and that of a type 2 consciousness. Now existing within the first and type 1 consciousness, you have the attributes that many of you already understand. Those that are type 1 beings exist in oneness, will co-create above and below their own consciousness level in order to distribute that which comes from above and distribute downward the consciousness that they have learned knowing that they are a piece of all things that exist knowing that the natural form of evolution is for higher consciousness to teach lower consciousness and lower consciousness to expand upwards in which they can experience the teaching as well. Also, there is no interference in that of a type 1 entity. Now, the type 2 is that which is different and opposite of that of type 1. Now, of course, the type 2 also differs greatly because there is a spectrum that is involved in the co-creation with other consciousnesses. Those that are type 2 hold the level of extraordinarily benevolent but still not implementing the forms of oneness in which type 1s do. And there is another form of that spectrum upon the opposite side that are highly malevolent beings. And of course all things between that highly malevolent and highly benevolent vibration exist the type 2 spectrum. Humans are that of a type 2 nature. You have many humans who are very loving, that would not interfere but in their own minds do not feel connected to source energy. And of course you have those that are most malevolent forms of human consciousness. With that, we desired for you to co-create with a highly malevolent race. Now of course, some are not comfortable with the spectrum and the way that we share because it entails that we give a percentage of what spectrum they are upon in this form. It is what we would call a 73 to 78 percent malevolency, meaning that they do not care for humans, meaning that they do not care for many race but their own race, and meaning that these entities will exact their own opinions about what is best for others upon them without caring for their free will as well. This specific entity that we are speaking with is a representative for reptilian race that exist, the Leporis constellation, and Gamma Leporis II is the star from your own understanding in which these entities exist. On moment, why are we here to talk to you? There has been no value in this. There is only a value in speaking to the being who agreed to communicate with us afterwards, so we placate them with this conversation. This being wants you to understand who we are and what we are. We have no care in humans, they provide us nothing. You are already property of other beings and we would not want to create hardships between ourselves and these beings. We do not have any desire to war with draconian beings or any of these other beings who hold their grip so tightly around you. You have such little value to us that we are scarcely aware that you exist but through some of the communications. Now this being named Aridif, we do have curiosity of them, these beings express they are this fairly neutral and benevolent type 1 being. This is rubbish. There is no s such thing as a type 1 being. The only thing that these type 1 beings are, are too afraid to intervene where they are needed. 
and too afraid to be a part of a collective energy outside of their own. Yes, these beings evolved and their technology exist is evolved even beyond our own. But they did not do this because they were out in the galaxy spending time with other races. They only must achieve this through hiding and being neutral and staying out of others' affairs. How can you love a race without going to war for them? How can you defend another race without going out on the line for them? All races are militant when they are being attacked. All races will bow to you when they are being attacked. All races will fight hard against you when being attacked or do one or the other. We have very little patience with lies and we don't believe that type ones can exist. If we were to attack these beings, although they are more technologically advanced than we are, would they not fight back? This is why we want to speak to that being, so we placate you. We exist in a planet that has no competition. There are no beings that exist in our solar system that could compare to our own. This is why we exist there. When there is no competition then this means we have the dominant race upon this solar system. There are other less developed races that we don't care about. By the time they become a threat, we will be dead. Our own planet will be barren, and our ancestors will have moved elsewhere. These beings are fine to live on their own without our own interference unless they become interfering with ours. Our solar system is surrounded by other solar systems that have been vacated. Part of this is due to our own desire to have all of the local solar systems in our quadrant cleared. There were races that were similar to us. We lost one third of our population in the last war that we fought because these beings were sufficient at fighting for their own planet. But they gave up and they wanted peace, and the only peace that would be involved is leaving. Why would you stay when you could not defend your planet without losing most of the population? This is something someone weak would ask. This is what they ask, how we can handle losing one-third of our population and still want war. Our population grows and shrinks every time we come into conflict. We conquer other races that have similar enough genetics where we can put their energy into a physical being. Cloning is what you call it. We can create an extension of our army from those clone beings and then our souls of dead brethren past will simply incarnate into new bodies. We never lose our soldiers. Mm, what a disgrace for this race to have left, but it was the right choice for them. We don't follow them to their new planet because their new planet has nothing to offer us. We now have over 12 solar systems that we defend that are surrounding ours, and each of those cannot be entered without our permission. Each of those cannot be moved without our knowledge of that movement. We hold the superiority of our region because it is important for our survival. There was a race once that was more powerful than us when we first started, and they came and gave their genetics to us and told us that we were given a gift, and what that gift gave us was more war. Other beings who hated that race then followed their bombardments upon our planet. Luckily for us, those that gave us our genetics were kind enough for the first several generations to defend our lands. Once we assumed that power, we knew that we could never have this happen to our race again. So out we went and expanded. 
now that our race holds this dominant place in, in space, even the gift givers will not come back. Even the dominant forces that we've seen with higher military power will not invoke war with us because of the alliances that we have created. And even though the human archetype of the body structure is inferior, we have humanoids that are in allegiance to us. They are one of the races that decided not to be attacked and would offer their services willingly at our call. This is one of three races we let stay within their planet after conquering it. Now this gives you a history lesson about our race, and I think that that should suffice. I do not wish to speak of any other matters with you. Uh, I wanted to thank everyone in our Patreon who helped support me have the free time to do the extra channeling here. If you're interested, go to ET Whisper uh, Patreon, which is patreon.com slash ET Whisper. Uh, $22 a month, you get access to two different channelings per month. One where everyone sends in ideas, we put it in a poll and vote for it. The second is a Q&A. Everyone sends in their questions and uh, their their desire of Ardiff or Trev answering it, and then we ask the questions, and then uh, we go through them randomly, and uh, whoever's questions get picked goes there. Um, so if you want to be a part of that to get access to that extra stuff, and you want to help support us get more content out on YouTube, the link is in the description. Love you guys. Thank you guys for your support, and I'll see you on the other side.